Hello everyone and welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps and you are joining me today, July 18th, 2022. This is episode 64 of Paper Crafting Playdate and I am thrilled that you're here. Thank you so much for joining me in my stamp room. Today I have a great project for you that is a one sheet wonder specifically designed to work with note card sized cards. So I'm pretty excited to show it to you. Let's get started. Today's tutorial is a big one. So I hope that you are prepared to um, get inspired to create some cards that are maybe a little bit different size than you've made before um, because we're going to use note card size um, cards and envelopes today. So this is a brand new item in the new annual catalog. I'll just show you where it's at. It's on page 137. They're called craft note cards and envelopes, $10. And let's open this up so you can see what you get. This is a really cool um, addition to the catalog because this is perfect for gift giving. And so that's kind of the point of my video today is how you can put together some cards that would make great gifts. So you get 20 craft note cards and 20 craft envelopes. And you get a box that you can very quickly assemble to um, give these as a gift or to store them. So it's a really, really great value um, for $10. Now these aren't the only note cards that Stampin' Up! sells. On the same page, 137, you can also get very vanilla or basic white um, packages of note cards and envelopes. You also get 20 cards and 20 envelopes. These are $7 because they don't come with um, the box. They're just the note cards and envelopes. The nice thing is that they're already scored and you just have to fold them and use them. So if you haven't used this size before, here's just a little information about it. So this is considered an A1 size um, card and envelope and the measurements for this card are five by seven and then you score it at three and a half. So it, the finished size closed is three and a half by five. And then the envelope is three and five eighths by five and one eighth. So it's just an eighth of an inch bigger to fit your card in there. And this compares to our regular sized card that we generally make. This is five and a half by eight and a half. This is the A2 size. So you can see the difference in the size. So note card size, this is what I call invitation size, uh, but it's really an A2. Okay, so that's kind of the difference. So they're a little bit smaller. All right, so let me show you how this box goes together because it's very easy. I already have one that I scored. Um, and fold, you know, I didn't score it. <laughs> it's already come scored. I went ahead and folded it and I creased all of the folds with my bone folder just to save us some time. So this is the bottom and this is the top. Now, if you go ahead and get this set, I recommend that you just take a little time and figure out the dimensions of this so that you could remake this box. Um, and actually you don't have to figure it out. I've already done that for you. And let me show you what I did. So this piece right here that makes this box, and you'll see it's got multiple layers, it's very sturdy. We don't have a piece of cardstock big enough um, to make this that we sell. So you would have to find, if you wanted to make it exactly like the one that comes 
in this little set, you would have to get, I believe this is like, it's a little, it's about 15 inches one way and 13 inches the other. So what I did is I took off this little extra piece here and I took off this extra piece here and I figured out how to make it um, so that it's still very sturdy, but you can fit it on a 12 by 12 piece of, of cardstock so you can make your own. So this is the base and then the lid. I also took off that piece and I made it like this. to make the lid. So I'll show you what one of my homemade boxes looks like. And you will also in the description box have a link to this pattern so that you actually don't have to figure it out yourself. You can go ahead and use my pattern. So let's put the lid together. So the nice thing about this box, or one of the nice things, is that it has this little extra piece right here that actually makes it look so finished. Now you can actually put this together without having to use any adhesive, which is kind of nice as well. So what you do is you fold these in, these three sides here, and then the last side, when it folds in, these little tabs pop into those creases, and then you've got this nice little box. Now, I'll probably go back and adhere that, but I wanted you to just see that technically you don't have to use adhesive on it and it comes together and it looks very finished. You don't see um, the inside looks just as finished as the outside. And so the bottom of the box does the same thing when you fold that together. So you do this, the sides like that and then this folds down and then the base pops in like that and then you've got this great little box isn't that so cute it's very sturdy and here's just half of the um, there's 10 envelopes and 10 cards. So that's what we're gonna work with. And I came up with a one sheet wonder design pattern to put these cards together because I'm thinking of our project in terms of um, how you can use this project as um, a gift to give somebody or to um, share what you, you know, to just make an assortment of cards. One sheet wonders are great because you can sit down, you can use the template, you can make your own, um, you know, greetings or embellishments on them and the bases of the cards are kind of um, pleasing, but you can just use one sheet to do it. So I chose this piece from the Hues of Happiness designer series paper. I'm using this piece right here. And for this, pattern of one sheet wonder you definitely want double-sided paper and you want the patterns to coordinate so you want the colors to coordinate and then it's nice if you have a contrast like this where you have the same colors but you've got different patterns um, that complement each other that's going to give you a very nice um, array of card fronts so here's how you cut this. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna pay attention to any um, direction that might be happening with the pattern on your paper. This one has a little bit of direction. I think the flowers are kind of going up. They're, in, they're at different angles, but if I turn it upside like this, they definitely kind of look like they're upside down. So I'm going to orient this to this and this is the top and this is the bottom okay so the first thing that you want to do and again there's written directions and everything that you can download so you can do this the first thing you want to do when you've established the top and the bottom is you want to turn it and you're going to cut at four and a half So 
So I designed this one sheet wonder so that you would use this whole piece and you would make 10 cards and then you're gonna cut and or measure at four and a half again and cut. And then you're gonna turn this piece, this is now three inches by 12 inches. You're gonna turn this piece and you're gonna cut at four and a half again at four and a half. And then you've got this piece right here, okay? This little piece. So we're gonna use this to decorate our box, so don't get rid of that. All right, so these pieces that we cut four and a half, I'm gonna stack them together and I'm going to cut them at the same time. I'll put this one on top here. And we're just gonna make three inch cuts. So all of our rectangles are gonna be the same size. They're gonna be three inches by four and a half. Okay, easy, right? Now here's the fun part. So if you, let's just assemble this for back again so you can kind of see how this worked. This is how we cut it. We cut four and a half, four and a half, and then we cut these three inch pieces at four and a half this way. And then we cut every three inches. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten card fronts, and then this extra piece here. Okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to go one at a time and we're just going to make the cuts on these. So I'm going to move this over here like that so that you can see what we're doing. And as we make these, we're going to put them on coordinating cardstock pieces that are a quarter inch larger than this. So the directions for this project is that you need 10 note cards, you need one piece of 12 by 12, you need 10 pieces of um, coordinating cardstock that's three and a fourth by four and three fourths. Okay, so the very first card front, number one, you trim at three and three fourths, right here. Let's see, can you see that? Let's make sure we're all in the camera here. There, I think that works. All right, so measure at three and three fourths. So basically you're cutting off three fourths of an inch and then you're gonna flip one of these over. I'm gonna showcase this other one on here. And then you're gonna attach it to a card front. So we're gonna go ahead and do this step right now, just to save us a little time. So again, this is a trimmed, um, this piece is trimmed to be a fourth of an inch smaller than our card base. And then these pieces are a fourth of an inch smaller than the mat. So you can see how that's going to layer together. It's going to give us three layers. So we're going to make cuts and then we're just going to flip one or two of the pieces that we cut to give us fun little layouts for note cards. Okay, so that's layout number one. Now layout two and three, you cut at the same time. That's what this arrow means. Because you're going to do these angled cuts, which are so beautiful. And so when you are doing an angled cut like that, you might as you cut them at the same time and you flip one. So you're gonna have opposites here. And this is one inch from the top right corner and about one inch from the bottom left corner. And you can just eyeball it like that but I I've measured it um, I've measured it and done it several times so I kind of know where the cuts going to be but basically as long as they're together and you flipped one to the other side like this you're fine no matter where you put the angle so now you're just gonna flip the bottom with the top so we'll put those two together and we're gonna put these two together
Because you cut them at the same time, they line up perfectly, which is delightful. Okay, so these are very, very simple um, little layouts, but it's a great project um, for anybody to do, whether you're a beginner, it'll be great. Whether you're a seasoned stamper, I think you'll enjoy it because it's just a nice little um, puzzle template to follow and you can then step up these layouts you know in a bunch of different ways which hopefully I'll show you so there's two and three okay so four gets cut twice so the first thing you're gonna do is cut it in half so this is three inches half of that is one and a half all these measurements you might not be able to see it from the camera but all of these measurements are on the template and then you're going to stack them and turn it and you're going to cut at three inches and that leaves you with a one and a half inch square and then what you're going to do is just make opposite corners here like that and then glue that down. I like to use the liquid glue because if I'm not getting my piece on exactly straight and I don't realize it until I put the second piece on then it makes it a little bit easier to kind of slide it onto the cardstock you don't have a lot of time to mess with it but you do have a little bit of time to wiggle it if it's not quite right okay so there is layout number four I like that one a lot okay layout five and six you also do these together it's going to be a corner angle and so you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna flip one this way. And for this one, you want to measure about two inches down from the top right corner and then two inches over from the top right corner. So that's gonna be about there. Doesn't have to be perfect because you are cutting them at the same time so they're going to line up as long as you have flipped that piece on the back okay and now you do the same thing you just exchange like that aren't those pretty all right so let's do we're going to switch to pink here so two of the colors in this paper there's so many beautiful bright happy colors in this paper but i picked out two of the brights that really stood out to me in this uh, paper and that is melon mambo and gorgeous grape so those are the um the card bases that i've cut and i'm going to try to get it half half and half here one two three four okay so that's perfect so we're going to switch to melon mambo i love that that's cute 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 and happy these are going to be happy cards okay let's do this one there's those two so the next one is nice and easy it gets cut in half on the long side and this is four and one-fourth and so the measurement 
is two and an eighth. And then you just flip one of those. like that and this is another easy one you're going to cut it in half on the short side and this is three inches so half is going to be one and a half inches and then you flip one Straighten that up a little bit here. There we go. I'm going to just trim this a little bit to make it even. Okay, so there is number eight. Number nine, so this is an option. So these are gonna be um, horizontal cards if you have a pattern, if, you're, if you have a directional pattern. If your paper that you choose does not have a directional pattern, then this really can go um, vertical. It doesn't, it's not hugely directional, but um, just keep that in mind. That's kind of how it affects whether your card is landscape or portrait. So. I put a dotted line here. This is about two inches over. So you're basically going to take off one inch on the long side here. And I put the dotted line to represent tearing. Now, if you don't like tearing, just cut off one inch and flip it. But if you wanna just do something that's a little bit unique, then tear off one inch like that. And then you, when you flip the other side, and layer it, you've got some nice little torn edges there. But again, if you don't want to um, do the ripping or the tearing, then go ahead and just cut off one inch and flip it. And you'll have a nice little third layout, a third, two thirds and one third with the paper. Looks really nice. And you just slide that under the first tear and then you've got a nice little layered tear and then the very last one you're going to cut along the long edge at three inches you're going to create a three inch square and then this rectangle to flip let's see that I think I do. This is pretty easy, right? Easy layouts. Now, because these Are all the same size you don't necessarily have to you know cut them in this order you can really pick up any um, any one of these rectangles and you can you know make a cut however you want and this is where you can get creative because you can I'm, I'm basically just making one um, cut in each one and flipping it except for number four so you have that option. You can make up your own. Um, if you like one over the other, then do several of you know the ones that you really like. This is just kind of like a jumping off point for um, putting together a very pleasing set of cards. Okay, so now that we've 
done this, I'm going to put this pattern away. Again, that pattern you can find um, on my blog. And we're going to attach our card fronts to our card bases. Okay, so now that that's done, what's left is to add our greeting sentiment and um, give it a little bit of an embellish. So I decided that I wanted to play with punches and use this brand new um, greeting set to me. This is new to the annual catalog this spring called Charming Sentiments. Has all kinds of different um, greetings in here so you can make a whole bunch of different cards when you're doing kind of an all occasion set like this. So I got a little bit crazy. So let me just show you. These are my favorite punches. And the oval. All right, so I took these punches and I paired them with a few of the stitched stylish shapes. So this is a great die set here. And I used one square, two circles, and then these two um, little banners here. And I came up with a bunch of different ways. So here's the stitched stylus. <laughs> stylish shapes that are stitched. Here are my favorite punches. And then I put them together and I made a bunch of different combinations that will work with, you know, just about any little, uh, you know, all occasion greeting stamp set that you have. So let's put these together. And you can kind of see how these punches work. I'll leave this out here so you can see that. Okay, so. And maybe we'll leave this here. You can kind of see the sentiments as well. I'll put that over here. How's that? There we go. All right, so to um, layer the white greeting sentiments, I chose a shade lighter for, um, for the, the mat or the shape punched, the, the punched shape that goes underneath, okay? Um, so this is Fresh Freesia, it coordinates really beautifully with the um, gorgeous grape and then when we get down to the melon mambo I've got blushing bride so all of these are going to be popped up and um, before we do that I wanted to show you something extra that you can do so this is a fun um, uh, stamp set to use because it kind of coordinates in a very generic way with lots of different flower stamp sets. So this Hues of Happiness, you know, has a stamp set, this paper here, has a stamp set that coordinates um, with the paper specifically called Happiness Abounds. And it also has amazing um, greetings that are um, varied. They're kind of, uh, the script you can see is very horizontal. So, a lot of the shapes don't fit with these. So I thought it would be fun, again, to use this because there's even more greetings here. But it's really fun. So these are all outline images, right? So I like to be able to coordinate other solid images that are similar um, that you can kind of use stamp sets together. And this is a really great one to use. So I'm gonna just pick out these four different shapes 
And then I'm gonna bring in the bright colors, the Melon Mambo, the Gorgeous Grape, and the Granny Apple Green, because those are kind of the, the main colors in here. And then we need a piece of scratch paper. So I'm gonna do some stamping off. Okay, here's what I'm, here's where we're heading here. So we're gonna just put a couple little images You can see how you get three shades of gorgeous gray by, by continuing to stamp it without re-inking it. So I'm going to do that again. So I get a nice light version of that. And then I'll do the same thing with the leaf. I'm gonna do that twice and then just add a little bit of that right there. Now I should have done it before I put it on the shaped, on the punch shape, but it ends up working out. Okay, now we can pop it up. And then I also pre-tied these little bows in the black and white gingham, just to add a little bit of embellishment there. Also have these dots that are called glossy dots, and they actually coordinate very well with these colors. So let's see how this looks. Add a couple of sparkles. Okay, so this decorative circle punch was new to this catalog. It has this nice little, um, you're gonna see me using it a lot. It has this nice little kind of random, it's not random, it is a design, but it's very, a very loose circle. So that's this one right here. All right, so let's work on these two. So now I have the rectangular postage stamp. Again, I should have, <laughs> I'm gonna get in a really good groove here in just a second. I should have stamped this before I put it onto the postage stamp. Oh, I like that, just a little pop of green. And then let's do these little berries over here. So it just gives it a tiny little, you know, hint in the back of the white, um, the white greeting so that you've, it just makes it a little bit more interesting as you're putting it on your card. So this one's gonna go like that. So this punch is new to the mini catalog that just started in July. Let me show you, cause you might miss it when you're looking in here. It's called Handmade Tag, page 21. And it's bundled with this um, Handmade Wishes stamp set. So they're showing it at a, as a, like a, um, kind of like a diamond shape here, but it is really square. So with this particular bundle here, you have these outlines that you can use with the punch um, before you punch it. So you get a nice little 
frame, a little stamped frame. But I've been using this uh, little square here in quite a few different ways. So here it is on that decorative circle. Here it is behind a square. And of course that could be um, straight or a diamond shape. Here it is behind this little tag. Here it is behind a circle. So it's pretty amazing to use. Now I'm going to do this the right way. <laughs> I'm going to stamp it first. Stamp off. We'll use that little leaf. And we'll go back and use this purple flower. Boy, my grape is very, very inky. So this layers very nicely onto this decorative circle. I really love that Stampin' Up! takes the time to kind of figure out how these things will, um, or makes it a point that they're similarly shaped so that you can use the punches together and come up with, you know, things like this that you can do over and over again. It makes your card making go together really easy. I'm gonna scan this um, paper here so that you will be able to download that so that you can have that as a reference. I'll just stick that right in the middle. Okay, card number three. So we're gonna use that same little handmade tag, but we're going to use it kind of straight here. So let's start, let's see. Bring in some pink here. Just a little bit. I think I'm going to use the glossy dots on this one. Since we've got those flowers right there, that'll look kind of cute to do that. We'll give that one a lot of sparkle there. Okay, so there is that one. So this oval is part of the double oval punch which these obviously go together great, but you can use them separately. So I really just showed them how I use them um, not together, even though they look great together.
So now we transition to pink, but we still have some purple in there. So I'm gonna still use purple. This is the Fresh Freesia, whoops. Forgot to stamp it, that's okay. <laughs> put these little berries on here. For the most part, I'm adding these um, punched and die cut shapes around the area where these papers overlap because that's a really good place. Um, it's a, lo a great location visually for um, for that kind of little focal point to be, but you could definitely move it around um, and it would not be wrong to do that. So this one is the essential tag with a square. And so let's put a flower. For the most part, when you have a punched shape, if you make a triangle with your dimensionals, you will, um, it'll be pretty sturdy on the front of your card. Let's see, so we could turn this one this way. I think I like it like that. Okay, this is a great, super fantastic, mega news. It could be used for anything. It could be, could be a baby card, could be a engagement card. It could be anything that you're celebrating. and it fits just perfectly onto this one. So this punch is called The Lasting Label. It's um, in the annual catalog. It is new to this annual catalog. And it actually is bundled with a stamp set that also has a frame. get it straight. There we go. Again, these are super simple layouts. You definitely, you can um, do all kinds of things to step them up and make them your own. It's kind of just a, a starting place for your Creativity. That looks nice. And our last layout, 
we're going to put these two together. Okay, what do you think about um, this process? Have you used a one sheet wonder before? I have a couple different patterns out there that I've created. Um, and I like to share them because I, um, I just like that uh, you have some kind of go-to thing you can jump in and get started with. Um, especially when you sit down and you don't have any ideas, this is a great way to kind of jumpstart your creativity. I'm gonna stick with my gingham. Right there. Okay, let's bring cards back and kind of look at them all together. I'm happy with these. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I didn't practice this one before. I just kind of uh, was figuring it out as I went and I love how it turned out. So let's put them in our box. Now, of course, you can take the time and decorate um, the envelopes. You can decorate the flaps. You can add extra designer series paper on the flap if you wanted to. Just tuck these inside here. So you can see once they're put together, it fills up the whole box. So really, um, because you get 20 cards and envelopes with this kit, you've got, you know, 10, which is plenty, right, to give as a gift. And then you've got a whole nother set of 10 cards that you can um, make your own box for, which I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a second. But let's finish this and let's wrap some ribbon around here. And we'll just stick with our gingham. And then if you want to, you can use this as your little um, tag at, at, for your gift. And what I like to do, now you can score this if you want, but basically you're going to be just folding up an inch on this square here. And then you fold it in half. And what it makes is kind of like a little, um, like a little two pocket, mini two pocket uh, folder, like when you were at school. So I just put a little bit of glue on the sides here, like that. And you can put tiny little, uh, just a tiny little tag in here.
So I just created this tiny little tag. So you could put a couple of them um, in there um, or decorate something else over there, but you would just, you could put your little, um, you know, for you um, or your little message there. And then if you want to attach this to your tag, here's, so this uh, particular Label Me Fancy Punch has a slot and a hole, like an eighth inch hole here, so you could put some little thread through that and attach it. So if you use some linen thread. tag and then you can just attach that to your ribbon and then you've used up all those pieces which is always delightful right all right oh I would love for you to tell me what you think of this project so far and what you can see you know what do you have that you can see that you might um, see yourself making all right so Remember I showed you my own pattern that I have. So you'll have, there's directions for this. So for your other set of cards, you could then make your own little box. So let's see. Now I didn't use the craft um, note cards. I used the white ones for this set. And I used the perfectly penciled designer series paper and I used this piece right here and made a set of cards with the same exact one sheet wonder design the same labels but look how different they look with just different piece of paper, different stamp set. One of the things that I added, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a second, was some vellum, some cardstock vellum punches, just to add a little, little bit of something underneath. Okay, very fun. So these are the white ones. Now, of course, you might not want to purchase pre-made note cards um, in envelopes, and you can make your own. You can still get two cards from a piece of cardstock. And so here are some I made myself out of pear pizzazz. And so you just, you know, can get two out of one piece of eight and a half by 11. Okay, I've got the same little greeting set here that we just used on the hues of happiness and this is a piece of designer series paper that comes in the hostess set of paper that you can get as a hostess in the Stampin' Up! catalog okay super fun once you start making <laughs> making these you'll realize um, that it's not only fun but uh, to do and it's it satisfies that crafty um, urge but also then you're like I've got now I've got three sets of cards I can give as a really nice gift so here's something different so because I made these with cardstock I won't have coordinating envelopes to use um, because when you buy the set of note cards and envelopes you get one per one right so if you're gonna make your own, just know that you can get, so Stampin' Up! doesn't sell A1 size envelopes um, in the catalog like by themselves. So you can either put these cards into the A2 size envelope like this, which is like no big deal, you can still mail it. 
um, if you already have these laying around, or you can just get the A1 size envelopes at a office supply store um, if you wanted to make your own instead of getting the pre-made ones. But if you were going to gift them with the, you know, the A2 size envelopes like this, this is another option. These little bags are in the catalog as well. Here's my three inch square. I just cut it diagonally, um, the leftover square, and put it here and then made another triangle to decorate them. These bags are great because you can stamp on them, you can um, color them with the blending brushes and decorate them however you want. But this is also a great way to give um, cards and not just these note cards it fits regular size cards and envelopes in here and then you can kind of wrap it up and it's a nice way to give a set of cards as well all right can I show you another set I'm so excited actually okay I want to hold off my excitement for a second and I want to show you now a twist on this so Let's say you didn't want to use the One Sheet Wonder, but you still wanted to make a set of cards. You can absolutely do that. And maybe you wanna make an assorted pack um, of cards if you especially have a pack of paper that it has like seasons like this, or you just want the papers to be different, okay? So here's another way to um, do this project. So you wanna have five pieces of paper and so this is the um, celebration free paper called rings of love here are the coordinating cardstock colors so right now in july and august 2022 this paper is one of the items that you can get for free with a $50 order of anything of your choice. This is something you can add on for free. There's a bunch of free stuff in here. And this paper is um, really nice in that it it is seasonal. So you've got all of the um, kind of seasons represented, summer, spring, fall, winter, Christmas. Um, <clears throat> So I thought it would be fun to put together a set of cards. So let's just say you wanted to make multiple sets of cards, right? You could get your five pieces of paper and you could do the same cuts if you wanted to, just like we did. So you would have um, 10 you know, pieces of this. So let's say you wanted to make 10 set gift sets of cards, right? You know, you never know. You might be planning ahead for birthdays or Christmas. Um, you could do that or you could just cut, you know, you could just cut however many you wanted to make a set of 10. So I thought it would be nice to make a set of 10. using this paper and so I already put them together to show you how fun it looks on this craft um, these craft note cards and then what I did is I am pairing it with um, this ringed with nature which is a bundle that is in the mini catalog See if I can find it. Here it is. 
So a lot of the images in this stamp set coordinate with the images that are in this free paper. So you can get just the stamp set or you can get it bundled with this, um, these dies that and in this hybrid embossing folder. They all come together as a bundle um, for $53. So let me just show you some ideas with this. Let's get out the stamp set. So here are the dies. that come with it plus you get this big die here and there's so many ways with which this coordinates so this back side I didn't even show you the back sides of these papers so here are the here are the fronts and then here are the back designs so this particular die will cut out um, some of these. Sorry, it goes this way, like that. So you can cut several of these out if you wanna get the, use this side. And let me just show you, I'm not gonna use these on our cards today because we're keeping it simple, but this is a new tree ring embossing folder, which you can just use like this and make this great tree ring embossed image on your cardstock. Or you can, um, you can use this with the die. Okay, so it sits right in there on the top. You put your paper in and it embosses these tree rings and then also cuts them out at the same time. That's what the hybrid folder does. We're not doing that today, but I just wanted to show you what that does. Then you also have these inserts, which you can also add in there and, and you could do like two colors of cardstock so you could get this outside ring in a different color. But what I wanted to do was take these rings and just cut them out in white cardstock and then decorate them with this um, tree ring stamp to make our own. Let's bring back the scratch paper. So I'm gonna take soft suede, because that's one of the colors that is in all of these cards, and we're gonna stamp it off two times, make it really, really light, and then stamp it on our little tree rings. We'll make our own. make up a bunch of these and have them ready to go. I thought that this would be a nice little shape to use for with our greetings. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll stop there. And then we're gonna take early espresso, which is our dark Our dark brown and we're going to use use it to stamp these greetings so there's a lot of really neat um, sayings in here so let's try to use them all so let's do love and warmth We have a thinking of you.
We have a just for you. We have a Merry Christmas. So this is a long, um, a long stamp in one line instead of two. So we're gonna stamp it twice. So I'm just going to ink Christmas first. So I'm hanging Mary off of the ink pad there. And we'll stamp Christmas and then I'll clean my stamp. And then I'll do the same thing. And I'll just ink Mary and put that right there. So now I've got Merry Christmas and let's do, so there's a happy anniversary in this um, in this stamp set as well, but let's do get well soon. And I'll do that same method where I do the get well first and then I do the, the soon. Okay, so there's our greetings. So we've got nice all occasion greetings. And now let's decorate them. I'm gonna go back to this soft suede color that we did our tree rings in and I'm gonna use a blending brush and just get these edges. And that'll help to make it look like there's bark on this tree ring here. See how nice that looks? Just gives it a nice finished edge. Okay, now we'll take some of these images that are in this great stamp set and they're gonna coordinate with the images on the paper. And we'll just do a little bit of that background stamping just like we did um, on the first set. So let's do, where's our Merry Christmas? Let's do that one first because there's a poinsettia in here. Take that and we'll take our red. We're going to stamp it off twice and then just stick it on there partially. And then we're going to stamp. some mushrooms <laughs> for this one here because that will coordinate really well. So let's take our crumb cake So do red mushrooms. So we'll stamp that off twice and then this just sits right on top of those stems. And see how it's just a shadow behind the behind the greeting. Okay. So let's do a get well soon. in the mint color. Okay. 
And for our thinking of you, we'll put that one in here. So let's use the mushroom tops, but this time we're gonna flip them around and they're going to be acorns because that's how clever this stamp set is. So there's our acorn bottoms. And then there is an acorn top. So we'll use our soft suede color and now we've got little acorns so cute right okay and let's see one more let's use these little like berries. We'll do the petal pink. And then we'll also use this leaf. Okay, so now we have our focal point images with our greetings, got them decorated. And we're going to just use some of these pieces um, to put in back of them. So these are leaves and branches and there is actually a bigger acorn and then the, the little mushroom if you wanted to make mushrooms or acorns, but they don't coordinate with the stamp set. They just like, um, they let me rephrase that because they do coordinate with the stamp set. They don't coordinate with a stamped image. They just coordinate with the theme of the bundle so that you can use them um, in different ways. And so I took my package of six by six craft because this, this is the same color as these note cards and I just cut out a bunch of these little leaves and then I also took this punch the bow punch and I punched out a bunch of the larger leaf with cardstock vellum and the reason I added this to this particular card is because these um, paper backgrounds are so busy it's kind of hard um, and my greeting little pop-up message is pretty busy as well so it's it's kind of difficult to actually put one on top of the other without something to kind of make a barrier between them so that it doesn't just get too much for the eye to handle Okay, so what we're gonna do, you can already see what I've kind of done here. I'm gonna take the ink colors and we're going to just do a little bit of watercoloring on our craft paper to make it special. So I'm using the um, smallest water painter and I'm gonna use lots of water this is evening evergreen and so I'm just going to use it right on top of the craft paper to color so I'm using colors that are in the paper and just using the ink itself so when these get cut out they are also embossed so there's little lines in the branches and in the leaves to really 
um, show detail and they kind of pop even more when you watercolor them. So that was another reason I decided to do that. And then I'll take the soft suede and do the stems. All right, so let's put these together and we'll see how we like them. Okay, so let's get these here on the right cards. I'm going to get my um, focal point image where I want it to be. And then I'm going to add one of these vellums, a little vellum leaf, and then layer it underneath the regular twig and that'll just give it a little bit of a kind of a buffer there it'll help tell you your eyes that this your you know this branch is separate This one has kind of this little berry sprig in there, so I'm gonna use this one as well. Okay, and the last one. Okay, so I already did the other set of five and I went ahead and added some of the brushed um, and rustic metallic dots and I used this kind of um, 
muted gold or bronze color and added those to each of the So, so here I didn't watercolor those just to see, and I liked that how that looked as well because it, it really brings out the card base. So there, I will finish adding those um, brass elements to that, but here are those 10 cards, and wouldn't that be a great gift um, to give? Or even you could divide this up and give them as, you know, sets of five. That would be lovely as well and a great um, a great gift um, to give somebody. Oh, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope that this is um, inspiring you to try some things. Let's take a look at one more set that I made. So this is a, also a homemade box with my pattern. Um, and this one I just decided to cover with just a little bit of coordinating paper. So this set was made with the Abigail Rose Designer Series paper, and I did the same thing. I picked out five of the sheets that I liked that I thought would go together well, and I just used an entire piece. Here, let's move those. Use the, the layered punches. I just did all different kinds of things on them. Added a little bit of ribbon layers. So you get absolutely 10 different cards even though you're so on this one I used uh, all 10 sides of the paper so I flipped so that's why there there's 10 different um, designs on the pattern paper, but they're all the same five sheets. I just use both sides. And here's an example. You can cover the envelope to paper with paper to match. So you can put these together um, in your box to coordinate together. Okay, I can't even tell you which set I love the most because I had so much fun putting them all together. And I have several birthdays in July, and these are going to be the gifts that I give. So, okay, so let's bring back all these sets and just put them side by side. To kind of compare and contrast. And then... You're gonna have to let me know if you have a favorite. Oh yeah, those are so happy, right? And then we've got our black and white ones, uh, perfectly penciled. All right, lots and lots and lots of um, different cards, but using a similar technique, a one sheet wonder um, or not, um, how to layer the punches. There's lots of good stuff for you to take away and use in whatever kind of card making that you like to use. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking with me. And if you uh, like this video, please share it. Please uh, like it and please um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I so appreciate spending um, every minute that I get to in my craft room with you. It is absolutely my pleasure and I appreciate you. So until next time, bye.